ZAGP is part of our support to agriculture in Zimbabwe. That's happening at different levels. So from from the most uh, uh, most urgent level, we are providing humanitarian aid for the most food insecure in Zimbabwe at this moment of crisis that we have in the country. But then we have agriculture as a priority area in our uh, uh, in our development cooperation. So we have these various programs. We have programs that are looking at and supporting the most uh, uh, the communities and you know uh, improving better farming methods. But that's looking at, you know, uh, basically providing livelihoods at, uh, at, at the community level. Then we have the Zimbabwe Agricultural Growth Program, which is more, a more commercially oriented program. And the idea behind that is to, of course, you know, to uh, provide uh, support, uh, a more oriented and commercially oriented agriculture uh, to work as an engine for economic growth in Zimbabwe. Uh, this vehicle came on the realization that uh, Zimbabwe is an agricultural economy. In other words, agriculture is the backbone of Zimbabwe's economy. And livestock is the backbone of agriculture. Livestock contributes significantly to the economic growth of Zimbabwe. However, more can still be realized if the sector was helped to address its challenges. The project seeks to create a robust, competitive beef value chain that promotes enhanced trade, employment creation, food security and inclusive green economic growth by 2023 for 25,000 cattle farmers. The key strategy of the project is the establishment of cattle business centers, otherwise known as CBCs, in rural areas managed by private sector companies. These sectors will increase the footprint of these private sector organizations out in rural areas and will create hubs of production, extension and marketing activities for beef farmers who will then access from these places formal input and output markets as well as financial services, willing services, fodder production and good animal husbandry training. Other interventions that we are undertaking seek to enhance the policy environment to reduce compliance costs formulate a national beef strategy, establish the Zimbabwe Beef Producers Association, as well as an online marketing information management system. In addition, beef producers will have access to genetically superior heifers and bulls through live importation of cattle. I see Nebu Dabu feed man, I think it's a one thousand, two thousand. So Nebu Dura feed man, the government cut, see, the five hundred, the umbrellas, five hundred. Yes, sir. Because of the, because of the crude drug, the money, 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 we believe that the profitability can be increased through different activity, such as the um, reduction of the feed that normally is the 70% of the cost of the production. Uh, and to uh, improve the green, green technology that allow us to reduce uh, the use of uh, charcoal and wood. And, uh, for the uh, feed production, we are going to work uh, with the two different strategies. One will be to group together the uh, producers that they can access to the feed direct from the farm, from the producers, so they can have a better price. 
On the other side, we think that for the producers that are uh, very far away from the markets, the solution would be the local feed production. Then another problem that the producers are facing is regarding the policy. With our aim of grouping the uh, producers together, the aim is also to bring the voice of the producers to the decision makers to have a better uh, understand of what are the needs of the poultry producers. At the moment, Paris in Mumbai, on average, we produce around 14.5 liters per cow per day, of which in the corner, my pastures, Kubriza no one, and Dawan Amfura, ne Zurunga Fukuya, we effect it. Zingan Bats about in total Saudi, no one above 20 liters per cow per day, of which is achievable. Our main objective is to double milk production from the current 75 million liters to 150 million liters by 2022. We are also trying to increase productivity, production, profitability and access to finance by all the daily value chain players. We are going to do exhaustive trainings from farmers, transporters, uh, processors, all the way across the value chain. We also have a matching grant facility where we assist large-scale processors and large-scale farmers to buy productive assets to assist at least 10 outgrower schemes. In the second window, we are looking at new collection centers and small-scale processors. Here we do a 70-30 match where we give 70% grant to the beneficiaries to buy productive assets. At the last window we are doing is it's for EFAS. So we are buying 500 income of EFAS uh, which will make the beneficiary will match on a one-to-one -one, uh, basis. We also have uh, semen for which we have 4,000 straws conventional and 4,000 sex semen which is going to be accessed by farmers at half the price. For 2019, we're producing a, paper, a position paper on cost of compliance and also on land rights. So every year we're doing position papers to lobby government to reduce cost of dairy. Uh, we've noticed that much of our breeds rather have been affected over time and some of the genetics have weakened. And part of what we're working on is to promote uh, improved uh, breeding practices amongst the farmers and also availing the genetics so that farmers could be able to breed. And then we're also working towards uh, addressing issues to relate with uh, animal nutrition. And uh, this is coming in to specifically bring in alternatives which farmers can also adopt to lower their costs of production. For example, in the pork value chain, you will notice that 80% uh, of production is uh, attributed to feed. So as the project, we are coming in to see how best we can lower the costs of production and at the same time see how best we can bring in some supplementary feeding even for goats through production of fodder. We are also addressing uh, issues to do with the marketing. So the project will also be setting up uh, some farmer-owned institutions. Uh, we are going to be setting up the pork producer business syndicates and also the goat producer business associations. So we saw an opportunity as a component of farms that we could be that bridge in terms of number one, commercializing the goats uh, in the smallholder farmers and in other commercial farmers as well. And certainly, you know, uh, giving them the necessary, necessary skills, the necessary knowledge. So we train people here. We we, we, we also supply the breeding stock. We supply breeding stock to any farmer that requires to obviously start up or to improve their breeds because we've got top genetics here. We are trying to commercialize. We are going to support this program to ensure that the farmer, the good farmer in the smallholder sector now understands that with my five goats, in the next two years, I should be able to have 50 goats. And out of those 50 goats, what is the optimum number that I can keep within my resources? The animal health, in this case, the animal health and food safety delivery services are weak. The SAFE project is actually focusing on the two main areas of animal health and food safety delivery systems. So the SAFE project is designed to deliver into the four main areas. 
The first area is strengthening the policy and regulatory frameworks. The second area for SAF to deliver on is building capacity of both the public and private sector structures and systems. We will focus on retooling the respective institutions in terms of providing the inputs that they need to use in order to be able to deliver the services. And this includes developing or improving on the standards operation procedures and the guidelines. The third area is the establishment of a functional integrated information management system that cuts across the two ministries, that also cuts across the respective units within the departments, for example, the laboratories and the field work, especially in the Department of Veterinary Services. The fourth area is the establishment of functional multi-stakeholder platforms that will help to coordinate the livestock, animal health and food safety delivery systems and advocacy issues. The involvement of the private sector will be key in this aspect. Zaki is about strengthening the three departments, which are Department of Research and Specialist Services, Department of Agriculture Education and Farmer Training, and Department of Agricultural Technical and Extension Services. The challenges faced by the three institutions are many in terms of them working in silos. Firstly, research could have novel technologies, but the way the technologies are packaged was not easily accessible and also extension could work with farmers without necessarily referring to new technologies from research and in terms of the curricula at the agricultural uh, colleges they did not link with research or extension to get uh, information on new technologies. Sakis wanted to bridge a gap that research addresses the farmers' needs. The Future Agricultural Center of Excellence is an online platform or an electronic platform where we are going to have a, a repository of various information to do with agriculture. We are targeting to put information which is research-based from researchers. Then we also have the academic information where we are targeting the academia. We are also targeting the students the farmers and the general public. So the content categories or what we are going to be uploading in the Future Agricultural Center of Excellence, we are going to be having some documents in form of uh, publications, manuals, pamphlets, booklets, multimedia videos and audios. The Agricultural Centers of Excellence, they were strategically established, one in the northern region and the other one in the southern region. At these centers, we have private sector that can also come in and uh, demonstrate or do their trials. And we expect the SS to run on a business model, whereby the private sector or whoever will be demonstrating would also um, contribute to income generation for the center. The ZAG fits in very well with the ministry strategy in the development of the livestock sector in that when the institutions are empowered, that will be the veterinary services, for example, the livestock department, when we are empowered, 
as is expected as it is one of the outcomes of, uh, of uh, the program. It will translate into more extension services going into the farmers' operations. Without extension service or a strong, motivated, well-informed, skilled, uh, extension service, it will be difficult to deliver a sustainable uh, livestock production. But the ZAGP uh, goes to do that exactly.